something. What is the most accurate clock in the world? But why even we are asking this question? Are there different types of clocks? Yes. So to answer this one particular question, I would say because you know what, I want you to show off tomorrow. So that's why I'm asking this question so that you can ask it to your friends afterwards. What is the most accurate clock in the world? To understand or answer this question, before this, we have to understand what are the ways of timekeeping and what are different types of clocks we have, all right? So let's begin, come on, see. Time is measured using oscillations. We all know what is oscillation, right? Oscillate, it is what? To and fro movement between two positions or states of an object is known as oscillations. You go from your home to school, from school to you come back to home. You came back to your same position, right? This is what? This is one to and fro motion. So this is what we call as one oscillation. And what gave us this hint? The grandfather clocks. Look at that clock over there. We call it the grandfather clock, no? So this clock actually gave us an idea of, oh, oscillation, right? Correct? Now, pendulum clocks. The grandfather clocks, the thing which goes here and there, no? Tick, tock, tick, tock. So this is what? This is what we call as a pendulum. So Galileo is known to, you know, at least first conceptualize this thing that how pendulums can be used for timekeeping. Why? Because they oscillate. Uh, I would say more than oscillate, they have one very more important property. That is, they are repeating this oscillation after a particular interval of time. I would say this is a periodic motion. And yes, for timekeeping, we all have learned one important property is you want something periodic. You want any motion like from one sunrise to another sunrise, right? Like water clocks, sand clocks. You want something which repeats itself after a regular period of time. You want a pattern over this pattern with respect to time. Then only you can use it for timekeeping. And that is why more than oscillation, I would say important thing is it's a periodic motion. All right. Yes. So one full swing is called as one oscillation from here coming back to this position, right? So when it comes back to this one position, completes one to and fro motion, this is what we call as one oscillation. Now time taken for one oscillation is what we call as the time period for that pendulum, right? Correct? For that oscillation. Now time period depends upon on two things, I would say. Length and gravity. So if you, if you notice, sir, what length? This pendulum has what? It's had a string, a bob, right? Now the thing is, the length of this string is what on which the time period depends and gravity, gravity in that region. So this particular characteristic which, which actually made these pendulums to be, you know, a, a mechanism for timekeeping that it does not matter how heavy your bob is, this small round object is, it doesn't matter how heavy it is because the time period will remain same. But you know what, these two properties, they are the cause of, of, I would say, discrepancy in the value of time period of this pendulum. Why? Because length and gravity seem like two very stable things. They're not that stable as much as we think. Why? Because length changes with, I would say, temperature, seasons, right? If it's hot, you might have seen the the wire, electric wires, they sag in summers and they become tight in winters. Why? Because in summers they expand because of the heat. Similarly, length changes. If it's hot outside, the length tends to increase a little because of expansion. And when it's cold, it contracts a little because of, I would say, contraction, right? If temperature decreases, it contracts, correct? So this is why length changes and gravity. Earth, we might think that it is 9.8 into uh, you know, meter per second square, the acceleration to gravity on Earth, it's consistent. No, it's an average value. Earth's gravitation or acceleration to gravitation on Earth is not consistent throughout. Poles, it's more, slightly more. On equator, it is slightly less. It's the average we take as 9.8. So it's not consistent, which means this will change. If you take this pendulum and at, at poles or at equators, the value will change. And yes, that's true. Accuracy is a concern over here. Thermal expansion affects length, small fluctuations in Earth's gravitation in different places. And you know what? This clock can lose up to 10 seconds in a year. And 10 seconds, we might feel kya hi farak padta hai. But you know what? 
if you are making something as a standard, it's a big thing. 10 seconds you are losing. You don't know where it went. Problem? Yes. They are not that accurate. Let's take something else. You might have seen in a lot of watches, you know, there is quads written on it. And when we were kids, we used to think it, it might be a company, but you know what? It's not. Quads is not a company. It's a crystal which is there inside your clock. Yes. So we use quads, a crystal, as an oscillator inside the clock for timekeeping. Yes, that's important. So they are used, they are using quartz crystal as the oscillator. A very important thing about this crystal is you will learn in future, it's I would say a piezoelectric crystal. So what does it mean? It's okay. It means if you apply pressure on the on the other axis, it generates electricity. Or reverse, you can say if you give electricity or potential difference in one axis of this crystal, it can oscillate on the other axis. So this is what we call as piezoelectric or reverse piezoelectric effect, right? So this crystal is used as an oscillator in the watches. Now, it's a good thing. It's much better than the pendulum clocks, but the thing is, it's still vulnerable to temperature variations and it can lose one second in three years. Still, maybe it is small, but it is significant. You cannot afford slightest of variations Second accurate, I would say. The the you have got the second one, you have got the third one or the or the worst one, the pendulum clocks. What is the best one? On which the standard is defined? The atomic clocks. Yes, here the atoms are the oscillators. In atoms, if you just give them certain radiations, right? You give some you give them certain radiations, the electron have a tendency to get excited and come back. So this is the excitation and coming back to the same state is what we call as oscillations inside it. So in very simple terms, think of it as when you give energy to certain atoms, they oscillate, they oscillate with a fixed frequency and when given energy. See, atoms oscillate with fixed frequency when given energy, right? So this is something we call, the, the, they are the, like the most accurate clocks out of the three we just discussed and they can count even nanoseconds. Yes, they don't lose time like the pendulum or the quartz clock. That's important. Atomic clocks are the most accurate out of three. You got the best one now, right? The boss. The boss is the atomic clock. Next is the quartz. Third is the pendulum one. And just to make you understand how accurate these are, we have even kept the standard for one second based on an atomic clock itself. Yes, it is the atom of cesium. The, def the definition of one second is based on the cycles or the, or the uh, frequency of cesium atoms, right? So that's why you can understand this, how accurate they are. We have even made a standard of time based on this, right? So that's why atomic clocks, cesium clock is used to define one second. Good enough, we understood. Which is the most accurate clock? It is the atomic clock. Nice. If you find this information helpful, make sure you like this video. Very important because that gives us motivation to make more videos like this. Let us know in the comment section what you liked and what else you want. Share it to your friends. If you think this information is something they would like or you can show off first and, sh and share this video afterwards to make them understand, all right? And subscribe to the channel because apart from academics, we do a lot of stuff to make you an overall champion, right? Make sure you subscribe to the channel because then only you will get to know what we do, right? Be a part of the family, you won't regret it. Till then, take care, bye-bye, we'll see each other again.